All right. Everything seems to be good. <laughs> so we had a little uh, technical difficulty there for a couple seconds because I don't know what it is, which is why I'm kind of worried about this hand right here, is that, um, I don't know, maybe like a month ago, something happened with my microphone. So I have one of those Yeti microphones and I think the connection is fucked up, which I don't know how, I never dropped it, I never did anything, but sometimes if I bump it, it just like, like stops working and I don't understand it. So yeah, it's, it's the weirdest thing because if it like, if I bump it, it like goes offline. And so what happened was when I went to hit live, I bumped it and it went offline and so then I couldn't hear anything and it wouldn't play anything. So I don't know if it happens in the middle of a set, which it hasn't happened yet. Um, yeah, that, that would suck. So um, it's, oh, people are saying that it's pixelated. Pixelated Morgan on mine. See, as you can see right here, people, I watch myself to make sure the feed is good on my phone. And it's not pixel, is it pixelated on mine? No, it's not pixelated on mine. Mine looks good. Does everybody else's look good? Okay, good. Maybe it's just uh, Mr. Baggins that uh, has a problem with his. So yeah, mine looks good on my end. Although it does look a little weird in the, in the actual browser set. That's kind of weird, so I don't know. Who knows, it says the stream is excellent connection, so I don't know. Um, all right, nonetheless, here we are. We are finally at the end of the week. It is Thursday night. I'm tired as shit, to be honest, because uh, this week I work from, every other week I work from home Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I have to go into work on Tuesday and Thursday. And I have to wake up at 4.30 pretty much every day. So I think it's catching up to me waking up every day at 4.30. Not, not necessarily the best at that. So I'm actually excited. We got a bunch of like older people back in the chat. It's about fucking time. Mr. John Feedy, where the fuck have you been, man? You've been MIA. And we got Mr. Uh, where I saw someone say, it. where is he? Where is he? Mr. Thomas Schumann, where are you? I think you're in here too, right? Someone said, I saw, yep, there he is. Thomas Schumann's in the house. What the fuck, man? It's a great night. It's finally, we got some people back in the house ready to, to ch chat it up and to listen to some good music, hopefully. Oh, the wife is putting the kids to bed. Can't you make her do that every time, John? Seriously, bro. Be like, look, this is like the one time I get to hang out and listen to some good music and talk to some cool people. Just make her take one for the team, right? Can't you do that? <laughs> All right, so anyway, we have an exciting night because as you saw at the beginning of the chat, if you were here at the beginning, in the chat right now is Endlessor Baggins, who has been around the channel for quite a long time. He took a break, I think, for a while, uh, came back and then took another break. And tonight is the first time that he is actually doing a set. So this is really, really cool because he is the one who first introduced me to some technical, technical, technical prowess uh, named Spiral Architect. And I can't remember who the other one was. There was another one, I think they were an Aussie band as well, that were pretty technical and a little more like heavy, a little more dark than Spiral Architect. Spiral Architect kind of very, had like a jazzy avant-garde kind of uh, tribal tech kind of background, but I feel like the other one, I can't remember what the other one's name was. Uh, do you remember Endless Sword? Yeah, Blotted Science, that's right. They were a little more heavy, if I remember. Like, it was a little more uh, metal-y than Spiral Architect. But since then, um, he's kind of popped himself back in here. Oh yeah, Persephone, I remember that. He's popped himself in here back and forth, but he's been around for the last couple weeks, which has been nice because we like it. Even his daughter joined. The question is, Mr. Baggins, is your daughter in the chat tonight? Is she gonna watch your set take place for all of us? Um, yeah, so ironically, uh, Endlessor tends to pick things that aren't naturally conducive to my liking, but 
what I want to say before we get into the set is, as always, it doesn't matter if I like it or not. That is not the end goal. The end goal, the first goal, is that you get to share with everybody what you like. That's the most important thing. We get to listen to what you like for a set. Number two is that there are a bunch of different people in this chat that have different tastes. They may like it. So, sweet, okay? And then number three, let's just have a good fucking time and maybe you open up some ears that wouldn't possibly like it at first. We've had several examples of this where, you know, people thought I wasn't gonna like it or other people were gonna like it and it ended up becoming like the best song of the set. <laughs> so, yeah, here we go. Uh, let's read off what Endlessaurus says before we get in here. He says, I'm happy to share my first time set with you all and your community. Don't think I will do this on a regular basis though, but sometimes here and there, very every three months or so, if ever I have good songs and ideas for a list. So that's his caveat to this. So it's kind of like, you know, this will probably be once in a while, unless my hunch is, my hunch is people, if a lot of people like this music, maybe he'll do it more because he realizes a lot of people like it. So we'll just have to find out. But again, don't lie, don't lie. I mean, be honest. The whole One of the main things about this channel that I think people like is that I'm not gonna fucking lie and you better not lie. Don't be a dick about it. I'm not a dick about it, but at least be real. Just be like, yeah, not for me. And you move on. Or yeah, I fucking love it, let's do it. Okay, so here's the first song. The first song is called Stone by Stone from the album A Murder of Crows and the band is called Dead Soul Tribe. Yeah, 100%, I've never heard of this before in my life. This prog album is good from beginning to end. The drummer particularly has a tribal style with his use of toms that I enjoy. Great, so interesting enough, a prog band that I've never even come close to hearing of. So is this an underground prog band? Is this a popular prog band? Is this like a leprous type of prog band? Anyway, this song is called Stone by Stone from Dead Soul Tribe. So let's get into this shit, let's go. Okay. I like that bass part. I do wish the bass was a little bit higher in the mix. Stays in on his faces. 
singing, Adrian. Really sounds pretty good. He's not too whiny. You like the drummer. ending was that supposed to happen that was a weird fucking ending uh but i will say i definitely dug that for sure definitely dug that for sure um surprisingly i guess i'm like one of the few people that liked his voice i mean i didn't love it but i liked it like i felt like it fit it had a grungy sound but the music also had like a grungy sound to me like more 90s than 80s for sure uh it did have an older sound um yeah, great transitions, good drumming, good. I loved like the power chords, like the deep chords that he was using. Um, I think the song flowed pretty well. It wasn't too fucking long. Um, yeah, that was a song that I liked. I would put that on a playlist. So yeah, I would say agree, Paravarium. It didn't blow me away, but it was a good song. Definitely a solid song for me. All right, so let's get into the second song. The second song is called Divisions from the album Primal Power Addiction, and the band is called Heaven's Cry. Another band I've never fucking heard of. This band is from Montreal. Ooh, I live somewhere in a two hour radius. Oh, okay. That is not well known. What I like about them is that they have, in my opinion, some jazz elements slash vibe infused into their prog metal. So, which to me, some jazz elements infused into prog metal is exactly the description I use for older Dream Theater. To me, older Dream Theater, like especially the first album when Dream and Day Unite, which is the most underrated album by them by far, I know because the recording sucks, but the music itself, they have so many good fucking songs on that album that people just don't appreciate. It has that jazzy, you could tell they just came from Berkeley vibe with metal and prog that they created kind of and took to another level from Rush. That to me is the perfect, and it went through, in my opinion, um, it definitely made its way through images and words. And then of course, Awake was a little bit more heavy sided, but still kind of proggy and a little jazz influence. And then it went to more poppy with, um, and I would even say a change of seasons, which they wrote during um, images and words and Awake. So that doesn't really count because it didn't come after that. And then uh, Falling Into Infinity was just a very poppy album, which they all say they hate, which I still like a lot of the songs. But like um, Lines in the Sand has that kind of jazzy vibe to it along with the prog. So I think that's a perfect description of Dream Theater. So early Dream Theater. So uh, 
This will be interesting because if that's the way this band sounds, I might like it. He says, lastly, it makes for a very original prog album to me. Okay. So Divisions, I like the name of the title, by Heaven's Cry. So let's see if this is anything like I might expect. Reminds me of something that Manuel Romero would pick. It's got that Imago de uh, Mago de what is it? Mas, Mago de I can't believe it. Right. It has that vibe to it to me. Mago de Oz, is that what it is? Yes. It's got that vibe to me, but not in Spanish. See, now his voice, I don't really like that much. Back into this is my favorite part of the song so far. 
because I feel like it has some structure to it. What's up, Jappy? We got everybody in the house tonight. Love it. Another weird ending. Dude, that's like... <laughs> Dude, that's two weird endings, Baggins. Uh, I think that ending very much kind of encapsulates this whole song. Like, it just didn't make sense <laughs> to me. Uh, it doesn't have, like, a good song. Like, it's not a good song. It's got some parts that I like, but I would say as a song... Yes, maybe if I listened to it three or four times, I would start to kind of hear the structure in it more, but definitely on a first listen, don't hear the structure at all. Just hear a bunch of random kind of cool parts. Cool? That's my thought on that. I'd be interested in what everybody else thought. It kind of sounds like other people felt similar. Um, I was excited because when you described it as jazzy metal prog, I was like, that's Dream Theater, but that was nothing like Dream Theater. <laughs> Very little. Very, maybe a couple parts, but... All right, number three. Number three coming down the pike. Curtain Razor is the name of the song from the album The Sense Apparatus by Frantic Bleep. So the band is, or person, is Frantic Bleep. The song is called Curtain Razor, and the album is called The Sense Apparatus. He says, I find this album to have a dark and thick atmosphere. I like the word thick. That sounded really bad. They often integrate elements of various metal styles in their songs. In my opinion, this is an album that is not well known, but a must listen for people that like heavy and dark prog. So this should be right up the alley of, well, is there screaming? Is there like like harsh vocals? Because then I'd be right up like Adrian and Paravarium and those folks alley. But... This is called Curtain Razor. Let's find out how dark it really is. Oh, okay. It's weird entry. We had two weird exits. Now we have a weird entry. It's a fade in. Celebration, no celebration. 
I like this part. I didn't understand the beginning. I definitely like this part. Yeah, I'm definitely going to see uh, Haken and Symphony X, but I didn't know you could buy tickets yet. I definitely like this droning part. Definitely liking this song more. What you say, Baggins, when you say thick. Like it's got that thick kind of like drive. Baggins, where's your daughter? She hasn't said anything. I'll be honest, if I could erase or even just get through the first minute, yeah, I'm totally cool. Totally cool with it. I like that song. I like the droning. Okay, so there she is. That was it. Was that your name last time? Was it legendary? I don't remember that being. I remember you. La yeah, you were in the chat last time, but the first time? Was that your name? Fell asleep because of your set. <laughs> That's not good, especially that part. Um, I would say after the first minute, I like that song. I would even put that on a playlist and just be like, okay, I got to get through the first, like, you know, first minute of it. And then once it gets in, especially when it gets into that, like halftime droning, like forward pushing, definitely like that. So, uh, Paravarium, the squid game. Interesting. The question is, and I don't, I already think I already know your answer, Para. Did you cry? on uh, episode six, like everybody else. I actually have been watching people's reaction to episode six, cause it's funny. Cause I watched it with my wife. We finished it like two weeks ago or something like that. And uh, yeah, so I was like, I wonder if people are gonna cry at this. I didn't, which is unusual cause I cry. I mean, I guess I got choked up a little bit, uh, but I didn't because I feel like everyone in that show deserves it because they chose to go there. <laughs> um, yeah, and I didn't even know about it. I was just like, what the fuck is Squid Game? And, and like, I heard Koreans talking. Actually, you know what's funny is Koreans don't even care about it. Like, a lot of Koreans are like, I don't even, I, they, they haven't thought about it that much. But here, obviously, it's huge. So, 
Oh, Adrian, okay. Sorry, I didn't want to ruin it. Spoilers! I kind of gave spoilers, but... And the sore, so far, I think you're two for four. Or two, wait. I mean, how many would we listen to? Yeah, for me, you're two for three. I really like the first song. I like, the first song is going on a playlist. Second song was not my gig. Third song, yes, after the first minute. So, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised, my man, because I thought, you know, typically you pick stuff that I don't typically jive with. All right, let's get to the fourth song. This is called Binom... By what? Binominal. God, I had to fucking look at that for a second before I pronunciated it. Binominal Structures is the name of the song. The album is The Algorithm, and the band is called Beyond Creation. Binominal Structures by Beyond Creation. This is also a band from Montreal, okay? They are categorized as a technical death metal band. What? Technical death metal band. I like this band for the impressive technicality and musicianship, songwriting skill, and bass in the front mix. Okay, so we're going to get a lot of bass. They are not only about blast beats, thank God. You know what? I think you can do blast beats. Like that um, Amon Amarth song, the blast beats in that, I think are very tasty. But most of the time, blast beats suck dick. They just suck. He says they integrate grooves and melodies here and there, okay? I therefore chose an instrumental song that I think illustrates their talent in an enjoyable way for listeners that are not fond on growls and blast beats. Okay, that might be right up my alley. You might slowly win me over to a technical death metal band. Binominal Structures, which that name in of itself sounds very technical, by Beyond Creation. Here we go. Boom. in conjunction to the straight dun 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 Oh, I thought it was gonna go blah. bass is doing like an off rhythm that's in half compared to what everything else is doing. So 
far, it's my favorite song tonight if it keeps up like this. that ending do 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 hell yeah dude you're three for four on my list baggins three for four holy shit and that song is the best one i would rate that number one first song number two and then the third song number three that was I, that was excellent i can't wait to hear that pop up in my playlist at the gym or when i'm in my car driving the 40 minutes to work when i have to go to work not tomorrow. So yeah, great job, man. Great choice. I think everything about that song was good. Well done. Good transitions. Um, technical, but not over the top, like Spiral Architect over the top, but enough to be like, obviously you can tell they're great, but melodic enough to catch you and like have like something memorable and connected. Very, very good. Definitely, definitely liked it. I'm not as curious as everybody else to hear the vocals. <laughs> no surprise there. So, yeah. All right, let's get to the last song of the set. Uh, this one's called Blood. Well, if that's not a teaser. <laughs> Blood from the album Blood. Oh, by OSI. I know OSI. I might know the song without knowing the, I told you. When it comes to titles, unless it's something I've listened, even with Dream Theater titles, I sometimes forget titles because I just don't pay attention to that. 
or even album names that much. Um, so I might have heard this and not known that I've heard this because I know OSI pretty well. Like I've listened to, because Portnoy's on it. So um, I know you know them, but <laughs> he, he knows. I know you know them, but since they haven't been showcased on your channel, and that I like them very much. I want to introduce them to the ones who do not know them. Yes, I might have, no, I might know the song, or I might not. I mean, I'm not like a diehard OSI fan, but I am. I do like it, and I've heard. I'm pretty sure I've heard everything. So I've probably heard this, but I might not remember that I've heard this. So this is Blood from the album Blood OSI to finish things up. So I wonder how many people know OSI on here. I'd be interested. Let's roll. Oh, I have heard this one. Yep. If Kevin Moore wasn't such a dick, he's just got so much talent. And I don't mean like dick as a person, like he just seems like a dick personally. I don't know if to do that. But musically, he's just kind of a snob. It's kind of like. He and Steven Wilson will never be able to complete an album together. <laughs> yes, I know this song. It's a very good song. because I know most of the songs and I know that I like it. But you're four for five, Mr. Baggins, in my eyes. Bet you didn't think that I would be the one that would think you're four out of five. <laughs> I didn't either. definitely has some like balls to the wall songs. Specifically drumming. Sure. 
Portnoy does like on his uh, his triple disc drum video. He does a couple songs from both sides. Like shows his drumming and it's just fucking sick. So to me, that was a great way to wrap up the situation. The fact that I knew it didn't make it left too much to the imagination, but that's quite all right. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely, definitely, and it reminds me of the song when I heard it again. It reminds me, because it's been a while since I've heard that song. It reminds me of a song that I want to share at some point uh, that kind of doesn't have the same exact vibe, but it has like a, such a cool vibe like that. So Yep, I uh, loved it. I think this was a great set. In my opinion, you're four out of five for me. I'd be interested in what everybody else has to say. Um, you know, we all have different opinions here, different tastes, different likes, but I liked it. Um, yeah, definitely three of the songs are immediately going on a playlist. The other one, the number three song, I'll have to like think about it, maybe listen to it again a couple more times before I decide if it's going to go on a playlist. Because I've said before, I definitely don't like putting things on a playlist and then later having to go take them off again because I don't really like them that much. So um, I want to say before we depart here, um, make sure since we're all kind of built this little community here of, you know, liking the same kind of music, kind of in the same kind of genre, just like was it was tonight, if you hear of one of the bands that's been featured on this channel, any of them, please announce it to the group that they're going to be touring and like maybe if you can give a link at some point to where we could go find where their tour is going to be or how we buy tickets if you want to buy tickets. I think we definitely need to help the bands out in that way as well as help each other out to go see some awesome music, especially since most of us, all of us, have been not being able to go to concerts for the longest time and now they're starting to open up again at least. And hopefully... This Delta shit is like the last big kind of explosion again. And even if we do have other variants, hopefully like they're not nearly as big or impactful because the vaccines and stuff have taken for somewhat control. Um, yeah, that's just a hope. So anyway, great job, Mr. Baggins. Glad that we got to listen to your set and your thoughts and you introduced a lot of people to some new bands. And I mean, I didn't hear any of them except OSI. I haven't heard any of those bands' names, even not even, let alone their songs. So I think if several other people in here have not heard these bands either. So if you liked what you heard tonight, go check them out. And uh, yeah, it was a great time. We have a set on Saturday. Uh, it's going to be Manuel Romero. And then uh, what else do we have? I think we have Monday. Or do we have Sunday too? I can't remember. Let me check. Let me check to make sure I let you guys know what we got. Yes, we got Manuel Romero. He is going to be next. I'm afraid I'm, I hope I don't go live on it by accident. Yep, and yes, and then we have Monday night. No Sunday. We have Monday night. Colin has a set on Monday night, which I don't know where he is at tonight. Where is that dude? So yeah, that's the plan. Hopefully you guys can make it. John, I hope you don't go non-existent again and you don't have to put your kids to bed. You got to set the tone. Let them know from an early age that music becomes before everything, including them. Just kidding. All right, we'll see you guys on Saturday morning at 11, hopefully. Uh, have a good last day of the week. Peace out. Later.